also uh, want to thank the speakers um, before because they perfectly uh, prepared the uh, road for me now to show you how is uh, the technical realization of the autonomous or automated uh, driving cars and as you can see uh, on uh, the headline uh, we uh, at Audi we talk about piloted driving because uh, um, like in an aircraft in our understanding and uh, uh, the final responsibility lies in the hand of the driver but I will cover this later on uh, the presentation first um, will give you uh, an overview of what is uh, the vision uh, of piloted driving at Audi then I show you uh, two uh, um, uh, approaches um, which we were shown uh, this year, uh, beginning of this year, in the Consumer Electronics Show in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, then, of course, the center of the presentation, how is the technical realization and a summary. Um, yeah, let's start with a few in the existing products because when we are talking about what is necessary for the next step for the piloted driving, uh, it's very important to have a look on what is in the existing car, what is in on the road, what is in, in mass production. And it would be easy uh, now just to cover the high-end luxury cars like uh, the A8 or A A7. A uh, I go to the premium compact class where we introduced in 2012 in the Volkswagen Group the new Audi A3 and the Golf based uh, on the world's biggest platform, the uh, MQB platform. And without a head-up display and without a night vision system, the Audi A3 and also the Golf have everything driver systems who are available today on the market. That means traffic sign recognition, that means light uh, beam assistance, parking assistance, that means adaptive cruise control from zero up to 200, parking in a, a aid system, and so on. And these cars have already a very, very high uh, 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 amount of sensors of uh, computing capacity, which makes them uh, already very, very intelligent. So this is the baseline uh, where we jump on the next step on autonomous driving. Our goals, our, uh, where we are aiming for is, of course, uh, increased comfort uh, and convenience. You get out of the car uh, uh, more relaxed than you get in, in the car. But the most important thing uh, is the increased safety. 84% of the accidents are caused by the drivers. And uh, if the, uh, the, the driver is supported uh, by the car, if it is supported uh, by the sensors, uh, the camera does not get tired. Uh, the system uh, is always on. Uh, it can be, uh, uh, like uh, uh, Mr. Flemish uh, mentioned in his presentation, it can be a very, very perfect uh, um, combination, uh, automated or we call it piloted driving. And finally, uh, it is also uh, um, additional um, contribution to the CO2 uh, uh, emissions uh, saving because uh, when you have a prediction of, of your road uh, and you drive piloted, uh, it is much, uh, much uh, uh, more efficient than if you do it manually. Our vision is when I don't want to drive, for example, in congestion or while parking, I let myself be driven. And if I won't enjoy the drive, driving, so I will do myself. This is a perfect combination in our understanding because a car and driving is still and it will be emotional. 
Uh, and we want to give this emotion, although in the future, to our, to our customers. But there are situations like in congestion or uh, searching for a, a parking a lot in a park house. That is boring. That is waste of time. And uh, these two poles uh, work perfect together. Uh, uh, also, uh, if you are a sporty uh, brand uh, like Audi. This videos um, are from the consumer electronic show in Las Vegas. First, uh, you see the example for the piloted uh, parking. The driver gets out of the car and he starts uh, the command, for example, via an app, or you can also do it uh, on, your, on, on your key, that the car is searching um, piloted his parking lot and with all the sensors uh, in, in, in the car uh, and uh, in the intelligent it, uh, together with the, the park house, it finds his way into the parking lot perfectly as you see here and it is absolutely centered in the middle. And the next application also, reality uh, this year, it was on the interstate in uh, Vegas. By the way, we are the first car manufacturer in the world who got a, a license from Deporta, uh, Nevada Department of Motor Vehicle to test our cars there. We show the traffic jam pilot. Uh, when the car detects a traffic jam, uh, you can take over it, uh, and the car drives uh, piloted, and once the traffic jam is over, then you will get an information that you are now to take over the responsibility again. We tested this uh, together with uh, many ways of HMI uh, uh, interaction um, already. This is one way to show it in the instrumentation cluster. Another way is uh, to give uh, additional information with lighting or steering wheel. That would be a, a separate lesson, uh, um, um, what HMI interactions are, are necessary. Uh, I just want to cover one. So now let's go to the technical implementation. And as we already uh, hear this day, nearly every car manufacturer around the world has shown uh, prototype cars uh, um, where autonomous driving or piloted driving is uh, possible. But as you see here, all these cars have the same problem. They have huge sensors on the roof, and the trunk is full with PCs and for the, for the necessary uh, computing power. And now we have the time after 20 years of, of, of research, uh, uh, all the common manufacturers have done, where the computing power of uh, the semiconductor industry gives us the possibility to reduce uh, uh, these PCs in the trunk, and also where the sensors uh, made uh, this development uh, that we can implement it in a way in the car uh, like uh, we are uh, used to it. So this diagram shows the basic block diagram, uh, how we are uh, realizing this. Uh, the first block, of course, is the ambient uh, recognition. Then uh, this, the heart uh, of the intelligence is the decision maker. You have interactions with the HMI, I already uh, told you. Then the trajectory planning and, of course, the actuators. The actuators uh, and the HMI, I will not cover in this presentation because we have already all actuators in mass production. Uh, all our cars, uh, from the smallest one up to the luxury cars, have now the electrical uh, steering. We have uh, the, uh, the braking system and so on. So the actuator side uh, is already done. Uh, I will uh, cover this part here. The car, as I mentioned in the beginning, what we have already in mass production has today a very high level of intelligence. And we, 
extend this level uh, of uh, intelligence and uh, um, getting the environment in a three-dimensional uh, space uh, with the next generation of uh, a high-end video camera. And uh, we also um, develop uh, a laser scanner. All the other ones are already uh, in mass production. The laser scanner is very important because uh, it has a, a very, very high resolution of the, of, of the angle, and uh, the detection is typically from 80 to 100 in, uh, meter in advance. And with this sensor, the uh, system is able to create a three-dimensional um, yeah, uh, information of the complete surroundings. And uh, with this information, we go into the next step, and we call it central sensor data fusion. We do three things. One is a map fusion. That uh, is a static information, typically, uh, where are the possible paths where the car can go. I say typically yeah, because you need an in -stored, uh, a, a stored space in the car, of course, yeah, with uh, the online uh, communication and getting to more and more high-speed online uh, communication, uh, although the map uh, in information uh, will be extended uh, from uh, online information. The next is the, the object um, fusion, that means uh, that is a, a dynamical information getting from the sensors. Where are uh, people walking around? Uh, where are maybe uh, some uh, bicycles uh, 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 driving uh, around? And the third one is the infrastructure fusion, light, signs, lanes, and so on. And uh, we do this in a central way, not in a distributed way, because this central way is, gives a much better sense of fusion the uh, latency uh, of the information uh, uh, is nearly nearly zero, uh, and uh, with this inform information, we have everything uh, for the next part for the decision maker. The de decision maker is the central part um, of every piloted um, function, and uh, it uh, determines which action are to be carried out, and uh, what is the destination where the car should go, uh, what are the supporting uh, HMI uh, in information, and of course um, um, it determines what actions are uh, really taking uh, place. The next is the trajectory planning. The trajectory uh, planning determines and ensures which path the vehicle takes on its piloted drive. And uh, there are three uh, major building blocks. The global path planning, that is the overall tra trajectory which is determined within the space uh, defined as free. Then the local path planning, that is a more uh, precise information. The local path planning elaborates on the global planning and uh, finally, in the path tracking control, this, the reference uh, tra trajectory calculated from the path planning is traced uh, using the actuators. And this is now the intelligence, the main computer, we call it central driver assistance system control unit. What you see here uh, is an, an A sample of uh, this ECU, it has around about this size. And uh, in the next uh, years, uh, we finished now with the concept phase. Uh, it will be uh, on the size, on the typical size of an, uh, a highly integrated uh, automotive ECU. To give you an, an impression, what is the computing power of this uh, ECU, uh, this ECU has the computing power of uh, a complete Audi A4 midsize uh, car existing today. And uh, here you can imagine what steps in the semiconductor industry uh, uh, lead to that factor that uh, 
uh, this is possible, uh, and this is the most uh, uh, factor in, in all the technical uh, things um, of the um, piloted driving. Uh, we have uh, um, a modular approach uh, that means uh, we do not go to one specific first tier, su uh, first -tier supplier. Uh, we take the best uh, in class approach of the software modules and we integrate uh, this um, on this driver assistance control unit together uh, with a technology partner. And this gives us the power uh, together with the sensors and of course all uh, the redundancy uh, which is necessary uh, in the car and the safety uh, development uh, process uh, to make the realization of the piloted driving. Yeah, the vision, the vision is within reach and uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, beginning of this year on the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, we were the first car manufacturer in the world who got uh, a license to test our cars uh, and we were also the first who showed the application park pilot and uh, traffic jam uh, pilot and uh, the garage uh, pilot. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, on technical side, it really makes fun to pushing uh, this topic. Uh, and uh, of course, we are also uh, engaging and working on uh, working on the non-technical aspect. Uh, uh, as Barbara mentioned in the beginning, that the uh, Vienna Convention uh, of 1968 is rewritten uh, in that way, that piloted driving, which for us, it's a very perfect support system, uh, will be happen within the next years. Thank you for your attention.